it's just stuff like this. So it's just like, oh, there's, you know, a little piece of hay. It's just normal. It just adds to the fun of it. it it's what happens when a little animal rolls around in the um, grass and the hay all the time, uh, a fiber animal. You get lots of vegetable matter in these, but you probably shouldn't have too much in the colored roving because it's been dyed. This hasn't been dyed. The, once it's been through a dyeing process, it loses a lot of the vegetable matter. It's really interesting to keep animals clean on a fiber farm, um, clean enough to use the, the roving. Okay, so I'm just going in a spiral. I'm just going around and around and around in a spiral, okay? So you can do it as big as you want or as small as you want. I'm going to do it about like that. And now you're just going to start in the center. And this is a little hard to see because it's brown on black. So the contrast is cruddy. But we're going to just start fusing that together. This is one of those ones that since it's another 3D, you really have to kind of manhandle it a little. You've got to just get in there, and I know it's going to feel really airy and poofy when you do this, like you're not doing anything, but you are. Um, I'm always in awe that this works. <laughs> Frankly, it doesn't seem like it should work, but it really does. Just gently poking it like that is going to felt this puppy into the shape that you want. You're going to spend some time on this. I like to lay it on the side and turn it this way while I'm doing it because I just like having this piece of foam for me to go into. It's just my personal preference. And I'm just going to keep going around and around and around until you get this done. So pretend that I got it done because it'll take me a while to do this and I don't want to videotape the whole thing, but you get the idea. Once it's solid into a pretty decent nest size, I added over the top of it some Icelandic roving from Blanche, one of my girls outside, one of my Icelandics, um, because I like, I just like the texture of it as far as a nest goes. I just think it adds texture. You could just leave it brown like this and you'd be fine. But I did include some Icelandic. Icelandic is dual coated. It has a tell and a tog the bottom layer and the top hairy layer. And you can see, if you look really close, there is there is a lot of hair in an Icelandic fleece. So it makes for a cool nest. I always pull it apart. I draft it out like this so that it's really sheer, kind of like that gauzy um, webbing that you use at, <laughs> at Halloween. Um, you know, the fake webbing. So you're going to pull it out like this and just... Again, this is just an embellishment, so you just lay it on top, push it down, and you're going to needle felt that on just like this. It doesn't take a ton to get this to stay, but you will have to flip it around. Again, because it's super malleable and you can pull it and tug it any way you want, you can just cover the back like this. That's how I did it. If you come up with a different idea, um, go for it. There's really... Not a huge set of rules in needle felting, except stab it and don't stab yourself. That's like the biggest rule. Um, but as you can see, you can do a lot of stuff. Let me tell you really quick how to mix color. So let's say you get these two colors and you love them, but you want to mix them. Of course, my little guy I just made. So um, let's say you want to mix these two. Think of it like if you've ever worked with clay and you've mixed clay, like Fimo clay, um, and you pull two pieces of clay and you lay them together. It's similar to this. You guys can see that a little goes a long way with this roving. So I just lay the pieces together and then I just start pulling and laying. You could pretty well mix this up into one color, but a lot of people like to marbleize it. Um, marbleized needle felting is really cool. That, that would turn into a really gorgeous um, piece right there. So marbleizing it is great. Like I said, you could add little dots or texture. 
Um, if you want to add lines or texture onto things, you can see that you're never going to want to cut roving because if you cut it, it just leaves this really harsh edge. I always only, oops, I only pull it apart, okay? So you'll pull it and you just twist it into like a little line and then you can needle felt that onto there. Um, at some point, you, I guess you could trim the edges with scissors if you want. If you're doing a dot, you just kind of ball this teeny piece up and you'd stick it on there. So see how big the dot is now? When you start sticking it on there, that's gonna shrink down to just like a pinhead. So just know that whatever you use, it's gonna really go teensier than it, than it should be. So you can see you can embellish and add tons of stuff onto this. Lots of people embroider on top of this. You could do embroidery on top of it that would be darling. You could add beads to it. You, can, you know, you can do whatever. So that's like a little dot on there. If you don't like the dot, the best part of this stuff is you just pull it right off. Um, if you do stuff on clothing, you do need to hand wash anything that you do. A lot of people do, you know, like just even dollar store gloves. You can do some darling needle felting on those and you just have to hand wash them, okay? I don't think I have anything else for you except to have fun and thanks for listening to all 22 minutes of this. Thanks, bye.